And before we get started on this scary Japanese urban legend, um, basically I'm going to read you what it says in the beginning. It says, warning, this is a cursed story. You may not want to read it. They say that if you don't forget the story within one week, you will have the same dream. You will be stuck in the dream and you will find yourself unable to wake up. Now let's begin the story. There was a Japanese boy named Kei who had a very strange dream. Dream. In the dream, he found himself wandering through a school. It was not his school. It was a school he did not recognize. It was night and school was in darkness. The sound of footsteps echoed down the empty hallways. It was very eerie. He tried to open the doors and windows, but they were all locked. He tried banging on them as hard as he could, but the glass would not crack. The school was large and sprawling. It was like a maze. It didn't seem to make sense. Walking down one corridor would bring him back again to the place he was before. It was very strange, as if the normal rules of time and space did not apply. Kay was starting to get scared. He began to run down the hallway. The corridor stretched on and on without end, and there was no exit. After running past the same set of classrooms several times, Kay noticed something odd. The corridor was an endless loop. No matter how long he ran down the corridor, he would always find himself back at the start. He decided to try a different route. He ran down the hallway to the right, then took the first left and the first left again. He entered the home economics room, and when he went out the door on the other side, he found himself in another hallway. He entered the heart art room and went out the door on the other side. Somehow, it brought him to the third floor next to the girls' toilets. He went through the music room and ran down the hallway, past the nurse of the classrooms. He came to his stairs and went down. He kept wandering and wandering. The night seemed to, to last forever and felt like dawn would never come. Kin, con, kin, con. Kay heard the muffled sound of a clock chiming. When he looked up, he saw a clock. He, the hands were swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Clomp, clomp, clomp. Clomp. Kay heard the echo of heavy footsteps chasing him. He was too scared to look behind him and desperately wanted to escape. He ran up a set of stairs that should have taken him to the fourth floor, but instead he found himself on the first floor, outside the audio-visual room. Clomp. 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 The footsteps began to get faster and faster. He ran down the corridor and turned left, left again, right, and left again. He came out in front of another set of classrooms. At the end of the hallway, there was an emergency exit, but the glass box that housed the key was smashed and the key was missing. There was a note inside that said the keys were in the classroom 108. Clump, 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 clump. The footsteps were coming closer and closer. Kay ran down the stairs. He turned left, ran down the hallway, then turned right and right again. He found himself outside a classroom. On the door, there was a sign that read 108. Kay tried the door and opened it. He stepped inside and shut the door behind him. The classroom was in darkness and he could barely see. He flicked the light switch, but it didn't work. The classroom was full of desks and there were bags hanging on the back of each chair. Kay started searching desperately through them. He looked in every bag, searching in every drawer. All the while, he could hear footsteps coming down the hallway. Clomp, 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 clomp. Before long, he heard something bang loudly against the door of the classroom. Boom, 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 boom. Kay still couldn't find the key he was looking for. He pulled the drawers out of the desk and tipped them on the floor. He opened the bags and began dumping the contents out onto the floor. Boom, 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 boom. The sound of the banging grew louder and louder. The door seemed like it was about to come off its hinges. He searched desperately, but he still couldn't find the key. Just then, the knocking on the door suddenly stopped. There was an eerie silence. Kate stood trembling, waiting with bated breaths. He stood there in the dark in the classroom, afraid to move a muscle. After a while, he couldn't hear. He, couldn't, he still couldn't hear anything, so he went to the door. He reached down, turned the handle, opened it gently, and peered out into the corridor. When he saw what he saw, horrified and screamed, and, he, and a scream died in his throat. There was, there was countless boys and girls. They were, they were in pieces. Their heads, arms, and legs were severed from their torsos. The floor was awash with blood, and they were, dan they were dancing back and forth, their limbs flailing to and fro in a dance of death. 
Kale is drawn into the dream. His body remained asleep. He was never able to wake up. Even today, he was still wandering through the school in his mind. I think you've read this story, please try to forget about it. If you don't forget about the story within a week, you will have the same dream in which you will find yourself wandering around the school. You will have, you will have to find the key and escape through the emergency exit before you come across the pieces of boys and girls who dance or be drawn into the dream.